this uh, interview is based on a book uh, written, co- co-authored actually, uh, by Richard Robbins and myself. And uh, basically, we started to recognize the ubiquity of debt and realized there hadn't been kind of a study done uh, for quite a while and, and not a critical study. So that's a bit of the context for uh, why we embarked on studying the prevalence or the ubiquity of debt across all levels of society. Um, to answer your question, what is debt? Um, I think we can think of it on a societal level as a social relation of power between a creditor and a debtor. And perhaps more specifically, we can think of debt primarily as something owed to someone, a group, or an institution. It is typically quantifiable in monetary units, but other forms of debt, such as fealty, have also existed. So, for example, during feudalism, vassals had incumbent duties that they owed to the Lord, uh, largely in exchange for protection and the use of land. Debts were largely paid, though, in kind, not in money, though this happened from time to time, depending on where we looked in Europe. But in debt as power, we're, of course, more interested in debt measured in monetary units, uh, which largely resulted from the increasing monetization of society over time, as well as the emergence of commercial and central banks. Now, we also argued that debt can be conceived as a technology of power, perhaps more insidious and useful in many ways than the application of direct force or direct violence. So force is certainly one way to exercise power. For instance, what Russia is doing in the Ukraine or what the United States uh, did in Iraq and Afghanistan during the so-called war on terror. That's one way to get your way, uh, to use your power. But of course, it has significant drawbacks, such as garnering violent uh, resistance. And it can be costly, of course, in lives and treasure. Again, as we saw in Iraq and Afghanistan, as na- and as we're now seeing uh, in Ukraine. So debt uh, is another way, in our view, to exercise power. So it's a, it's a technique, in a sense, to get your way, since it causes people, institutions, and states to act in ways that they, um, if they had other options, other opportunities, uh, they might not do so. Uh, So, for instance, it is well known in the socialist literature that people who want houses and take out large mortgages uh, will be more compliant with the so-called capitalist order of things.